Hi Sally, how are you? Hey, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Not too bad, thank you very much. Not too bad. How have how have you uh, been doing with uh, all the craziness? Have you been been able to keep working or writing? Writing. It's yeah. a good time for writing, isn't it? I guess. Very good time for writing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first off, congratulations on the film. Thank you. I watched it yesterday. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I just wanted to begin by just asking you. Obviously, I know this is a very personal film for you, but just wondering why now was the time to do it, and and what kind of spurred you on to to make it now. Um, well, actually, I was working on it for several years, um, writing it and rewriting it and re envisioning it, um, and um, it came out of. Uh, both a, a short-term preoccupation and a long-term preoccupation. The short-term preoccupation at the time was that my younger brother was ill with a form of young onset dementia, very a rare form and at a very young age. Um, and uh, I noticed how he was treated, not always well. Um, and um, whereas I was finding I could communicate with him easily and felt that there was a possibly a misinterpretation of the state that he was in and that may be possibly wishful thinking that while he was appearing to others to so to speak disappear somewhere that he was going somewhere really interesting um, I hoped in his mind and so that gave birth to the story but the the underlying preoccupation was really about the choices that we make and the consequences of choices that we make. Everyone's had that experience of standing at a crossroads where you think, shall I go this way or shall I go that way? Shall I be in this relationship or that, which will follow this career path or shall I immigrate? All these things. You take that path, that one path, the decisive one, but maybe another part of you just kind of keeps going down that other one. So in this story, it's as if he is able to access the other parts of himself that went elsewhere, the lives he didn't live, the roads are not taken literally. And so those two themes came together in this in this story. That's one of the really interesting things I liked about the movie was that obviously we've seen we've seen movies about people with dementia and people with, with, with medical issues, all that kind of stuff. And we've seen them kind of be cared for. But in this, like you say, you get to kind of access where they may or may not be going. I mean, that must must have been a uh, a challenge because obviously it's so personal for you, but a great thing to do in terms of you got to discover, you know, a story that might not have been told and to discover things about the characters that, that might not have been told in, in other stories. Yes, I think so. And I think this, you know, there's terrible taboos still and stereotypes around uh, dementia, not just Alzheimer's, but all the different variations. There's taboos around illness. And look, we're now in the middle of mass of a pandemic um, in which there's a huge amounts of sort of fear and terror about illness, the illness, and also um, huge burden of care on uh, in social care doctors but also within families mothers daughters sisters uh, fathers brothers whatever learning how to look after each other uh, whilst stuck indoors or do ordinary things and you know every, everyone's in this kind of surreal state so obviously that wasn't happening when i wrote this film or made it um, but it's coming out into that environment where care and love for the sick and trying to think differently about the lives that we live and what what's important in the lives that we live and who who is important to us you know um is more crucial than ever yeah absolutely i mean in terms of writing it i mean we see obviously flashes of these these potential other lives or the life that uh, javier's character lives before or, or maybe did or maybe wanted to i mean in terms of writing it did you did you flash out all of those other strands or was it just yes. kind of encased in the in the script and did you did you have to cut stuff that you would have liked to have been oh, of course. included every film i always and, and like every every director you end up having to cut certain sections when you finally put the jigsaw together and you realize that um, in this case that it was very complicated jigsaw um, and uh, so yes I had to cut some things um, but um, I think it's all about in, in the end about communicating in a, in a clear way even if the storyline is quite um, a, com a complicated um, ride you know with its troughs and peaks and, and, and so on but I always thought of it as parallel lives you know, that he really is coexisting in all these other places, that they're not flashbacks into a past or even into a future. It's as if we all are more than one thing. In, in some sense, we're all living several parallel lives 
potentialities, but we tend to perform as if we're only in one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Javier. I remember seeing him. This re this reminded me a lot of his performance in The Sea Inside, uh, where he played a man. I think he was uh, a paraplegic, if I remember, yes. or had some issues. He's he's one of those actors that's able to really kind of delve into these really interesting subjects and everything else. I mean, it, I can imagine it was easy to, to 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 cast him and everything else. But what made him so special? I mean, was it was it that performance and other performances that drew you to him? Or I really was, was a great admirer of the film called Beautiful by Inuritu, mm. um, where I think thought he was he was also playing some somebody with an illness in that one. Um, but he always has, whatever he does, he always has a very commanding presence. And in this film, um, he's not somebody who's talking a great deal. So it had to be somebody who you look at their face and, and begin to sort of think what's going on inside and that can carry you through uh, this, the, the inevitable silences um, while he, uh, let's say, time and space travels into his parallel existences the road's not taken yeah and obviously got to work with with Elle again I just wanted to ask you what it was like going back to work with her because you worked with her and Ginger and Rosa when she was a bit younger now she's she's blossomed she's become an adult she's done these really interesting indie films as well as some of the, the you know obviously yeah. she's still only 21 kind of stuff. still only 21 uh, what was did you notice any change in in her when you worked with her was she kind of the same person just just slightly more I guess mature same person she was always mature, even when she, when I first met her at 13, she was a fully professional and mature individual in a 13 year old kind of a way, you know? Um, but she, yeah, she's got a lot of experience under her belt. I love working with her. She's got an amazing capacity to uh, throw herself into an experience in the park that she's never lived in her own life but it looks so, it becomes so authentic because she fully imagines herself in, in the skin of, of somebody else, the character that she starts to embody. She's also a lot of fun to work with. There's, you know, even when you're playing a difficult scene or she needs to cry, for example, as she did in, in a couple of scenes in this, in between takes, you know, it's all laughter and hugs. Well, it was anyway, before hugs were not allowed on set. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got them in before before the, all the yeah. madness. Uh, Sally, love, love you to talk to you as ever. Good luck with the film and uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.